Welcome to episode 35 of my West Ham FM15 career. It's been a while since the last video. I've uh, played through till the 20th of February where we're about to play Bayern Munich in the Champions League first knockout round. This is the first leg. I'm going to play the second leg in this video as well. There's two league games in between so I will play them and then show you the results before moving on to the second leg. So this video could be quite long but I hope you enjoy it nonetheless. As you can see we're doing very well in the league. It's pretty much wrapped up, to be honest. We are nine points ahead of Chelsea with 12 games to go. I can't see us slipping up. You never know. But we, we should comfortably win the league. We've lost twice against Man City and once against Chelsea uh, and drawn once against Arsenal. So we, we're draw we've lost and drawn against big teams. We've won the rest of the games like we should, really. We've scored plenty of goals and conceded yeah, an OK number, 43 goal difference as well. If we go to player stats, as you can see, Origi's top score of 21 goals, Roberts is third with 15, and Christian Tello's fifth with 12. So three players in that top five. Average rating though, four players. Roberts, Origi, Yuri, and Eustace Van Aken are centre-back. Brilliant stuff. Assist as well, Patrick Roberts top with 14. Yuri's fit the joint second with nine. So it's been an incredible season for us. If I go to the, the schedule and see how we've done since that defeat against Real Madrid, as you can see, we've only lost two games, and that's just towards the end of this period of time. We beat Everton 4-1, hat-trick from Origi, beat Blackburn 2-1, beat Wigan 2-1, my bogey team on this save, it seems to be. Uh, beat Norwich 3-0, a couple goals from Anthony. Then we beat Hull 3-2, and then an incredible 10-1 win against Chesterfield. I know it's Chesterfield, but a fantastic win in the FA Cup. Four goals from Patrick Roberts and three from Carrasco really did destroy them. I did post a few things on Twitter uh, just in this sort of period uh, of time. Um, so make sure you follow me on Twitter so you know what's uh, going on. I occasionally post an update if I haven't done a video for a while. Then we beat Southampton 4-0, Origi with two goals. Beat Stoke 2-0, beat Aston Villa 5-1 in the FA Cup. A hat-trick from my new signing who I will show you in a minute then a, a crazy game we lost 5-4 against Man City we were 4-2 up in the second half and we just fell apart our, our defence just really did fall apart towards the end Yuri actually missed the penalty to win, to get his hat-trick to make it 5-2 so in a way it's sort of his fault unfortunately despite having a cracking game other than that penalty miss we then beat QPR 1-0 Origi with the winner beat Liverpool 4-0 amazing hat-trick from Patrick Roberts once again he is phenomenal uh, then a 3-1 win against Ipswich, couple goals from Tello. And just now, we, we got knocked out of the FA Cup. We played a slightly weaker team because of the Bayern Munich match. And unfortunately, they came from behind to win 3-2. My defence is sometimes still a bit questionable. But you'll sh I'll, see, I'll show you in a minute <laughs> that hopefully it will be improved dramatically soon. So we go to transfer history. Now, as you can see, I've sold £99 million pound worth of players this this year. If we go to the dates, we can see the most recent sales in the January transfer window. So I've loaned out some more youth players. Also had to sell Anthony to Bayern Munich for £30 million because they that was his release clause. They came in and I had no power over him. And he's gone to Bayern Munich, which is why I've had to sign another striker to replace him. He is a, f a fantastic player. He's developed amazingly well. He's only 23 and he is a, a brilliant player. And he had a good season for me up till now with 12 goals and 6 starts and 15 sub-appearances. That is very good. Nine, uh, 15 goals in all competitions last year, so a couple of good seasons. This season he really did develop well. Unfortunately, I've had to sell him, but it's not the end of the world because I've got a re and a new guy that's come in who's very young. And 30 million is, is not bad for him, I don't think. It's very good, in fact. And that was the only player I sold... But I've, I've sent Bravo out on loan because he's not playing. Zarate's gone out on loan to, on loan to Everton because he's still got very good attributes. But he's getting on a bit and he's not going to play so many games for me. Um, so I thought it would be best to let him play at Everton. Uh, also, uh, some youth players going out on loan. Anyway, coming into the team, this is the exciting bit. So we've spent a hell of a lot of money this year. But, you know, that's it's only 37 million net amount. Coming into the team, so we signed this youngster, Henry Burrell, 18 years old, looks incredible, two and a half star current ability already for the striker. He could become one of the best strikers, if not the best striker in the world. And I got him from AS Monaco for 20 million, 
Uh, it's rising to 20 million. I think it's 15 million up front. And I know it's a lot for a, an 18 year old, but he is going to be a star. Scored a hat trick in the FA Cup. That's his only goal so far. Hasn't been so successful in the league, but that's only four sub appearances towards the end of the game. In the FA Cup, two, two games, three goals, three goals in one game, of course. That was a good game for him. Um, but he should be a star player. He's obviously going to be back up for Origi at the moment. But this is the main man, Balanta. 45 million. It's rising to 45 million. I think it's about 25 million up front, 20 million over four years, possibly, with other extra bits in there. It's a big fee. He's on the biggest wage at my club, along with Yuri, who's got a new contract now. Um, it's amazing how I managed to push him down to 90k, but there's a lot of extra things like. Uh, appearance fees and that sort of clean sheet bonuses so it could possibly be a bit an expensive player but he's if probably the best centre back on the game now or at least in the top five centre backs in the game now he's been injured unfortunately um, he's played a few games for me as you can see four games three in the league a couple of things are going down since his injury um, but he he's surely going to hold my defence together. Unfortunately, he had a poor game against Man City where we lost 5-4, but my whole defence did. Uh, but other than that, he, he's been solid. Of course, he missed the Tottenham game where we conceded three goals. Um, but I think he's, I've never signed him. That's the thing. Everyone goes on about him. Everyone. Everyone knows Balanta. Edo Balanta, the, the wonder kid. And I've decided to go for him because this save, I'm spending quite a bit of money. West Ham are improving. And it's not too long before I'm sure one of my players will want over 100k a week. Unfortunately, it's amazing how I haven't managed to, how I've managed to keep it down so far. I am rambling here, but this is. People have asked me to do more overviews of my team, um, so here we go. Origi, top scorer, 27 goals. Robert second with 24. Average rating wise, 7.79 for Patrick Roberts. Let's look at the assists as well. Just stick them in there. Top assists, Patrick Roberts, 23 assists in all competitions. Then it's Yuri and Carrasco of 14, who is... Carrasco is a fantastic player. Everything going down there for some reason. I don't know where that. I'll have to look at the training. Uh, but, and Yuri, what a player. Unbelievable player. Oh, 85k a week. That was his new contract, but he's got extra things in there as well. Uh, so I, I, I tend to try and keep the actual wage down and put performance enhancing performance enhancing drugs no performance in, enhancing uh, clauses in there um, Arigi's on 85k a week as well uh, but they've got expensive goal bonuses and that sort of thing but I just want to keep the wages down as much as possible anyway we're going to go and play Bayern Munich and let's hope we can beat them so this is my lineup not having Belanta is a big blow of course against a team like Bayern Munich uh, but Sorensen's been fantastic this season at centre back. He's been playing ahead of Zulu as well, especially recently because he went off to African Cup of Nations. But Sorensen's a very good centre back, and it's strange that Denmark don't value him higher. He's only got 11 caps for them, but he's really good, and he's been very solid for me over the past three or four seasons. So he's going to be playing alongside Van Aken, who is obviously amazing centre back, as you can see. Another player that hasn't really broken into his nation team for whatever reason only five caps for Holland despite being you know four star key player for me they must have some very good centre backs if that's the case uh, Marcelo's not playing because um, he's a bit tired and also Douglas Santos has come into the team when Marcelo's been injured for a, a very long time in fact about a couple two or three months I think um, and Douglas Santos has performed very well and in fact has once again improved and he's on a similar level, if not the same level, to Marcelo nowadays. So I've got two very good Brazilian left-backs. Marcelo, of course, has got more experience. Um, he's now 30 years old, four years older than Douglas Santos. But they are very similar, so it doesn't really matter who I play. But it's good to have two good left-backs, because a right-back is a problem. Ivan can be very unpredictable. Garzon is really a centre-back, a young Colombian centre-back. Hopefully a future partnership with Balanta would be brilliant, although Van Aken will be there for many years, I'm sure. Um, but right back definitely needs to be sorted out in the summer. I've been saying it nearly every episode for the last 10 episodes, and I, it's just so hard to find fullbacks on this on Football Manager. The last few years, there's just not that many fullbacks, or world-class fullbacks in the world. 
So it has made me think maybe I could play three at the back, but then you still usually play wing backs if that's the case. But maybe I can work out some sort of formation that suits my team. Although I've of course got two good left backs, they're solid, not uh, incredible. But let's have a look at Bayern because their team is insane. I had a look at it and I thought, oh no, I'm going to get absolutely mullered. But then again, I've got a good team as well. They've got Neuer, Emre Chan, Bad Stuber, Boa Ten still, Lahm, Alaba, Strootman, William Carvalho, Schreinsteiger, Thiago, Müller, Goetze, Kennedy, they've got strikers galore. Kennedy, Anthony, Gabriel, Barbosa, Lewandowski and Balotelli, who is actually very, very good on this game, on this save especially. Um, so Chelsea wants him actually at the moment. It is going to be tough. Let's see who they have thrown up against me, though. Lewandowski and Balotelli up front. Strootman, Hatchberg, Thiago in midfield, Alabalam, Berting, Benatia and Bastuba. Three at the back could be a problem for Origi by himself. But let's hope we can <laughs> pull off a shock at home. Of course, we're at home here. We want to try and keep a clean sheet, preferably. I am going attacking. My usual attacking. Counter occasionally works. <laughs> and I say occasionally. Uh, in game, when I change to counter, it can be a problem. Went to counter against Man City and lost 5-4. Um, so <laughs> it doesn't always work for me. I hope Garzon can be a bit more solid defensively at right back than Ivan, which is why I'm playing him. Time will tell. Uh I hope you are enjoying this series though, like I said in the last episode, it's a bit slow going, uh, the odd episode every now and then, As it, especially when it gets to this stage, five seasons in, I'm sort of, I'm really enjoying it, when I play it, I really enjoy it, but sometimes it's hard to motivate myself to just get on with it, playing a, a network save with one of my friends at the moment as well, which is good fun, uh, I probably won't YouTube that, and Van Aken has given away a penalty, which Balotelli will most probably scored. I like, Van Aken was the last man back there, almost. He had to do something, and unfortunately... Oh, Palatelli has missed! Unbelievable. He doesn't miss penalties, does he? We are probably pushing a bit too high up by the looks of it. Oh, Douglas Santos, just as I was bigging you up. Good save by Liali, who has been excellent recently. We need to drop deeper, I think. Because they are getting in behind far too easily. Let's see if that works. Oh, Sorensen gives away. <laughs> My defenders, I've just been bigging them all up and suddenly they've all uh, decided to switch on self-destruct and Bellatelli smashes, smashes that over. Yuri, come on. Oh, oh Arigi, uh, Tello, yes. One now. Yuri has been good with his free kicks lately. He usually gets them on target probably 80% of the time and causes problems for the keeper at least. And he did there because Neuer just couldn't keep it out. Probably you know, That was awful. It was straight at him and he's just palmed it under the post. And Tello smashes it in. I mean, I don't know what Neuer was doing. I suppose it's hard to catch that sort of ball when it's straight at you and it's powerful. But he's just palmed it into trouble. I mean, 1-0 up. I'm not going to complain. Okay. Let's keep it going, I guess. Garzon's a little bit tired at right back, but dropping deep hasn't. We haven't had any highlights against us since then, have we? Apart from a free kick. Come on, Roberts. He is so good at dribbling; it is ridiculous. He's wonderful to watch. I, he's my favourite player to watch on FM15. Incredible. Origi's not bad either. Tello's good. I mean, I've got a great team. I really love this squad. It's taken. A, it took a bit of time to obviously win something, win in the league last year, but but it was worth it because it's allowed me to build up slowly, and just pick up the best players over time. Patrick Roberts, Yuri, all these great wonder kids at the start of the game, and I've picked up some very good regions as well, which should hopefully develop. And Lewandowski scores. <sighs> yeah, Sorensen thinks it's offside. It may have been. I don't know. Can't really tell from this angle, can we? I think, in fact, Sorensen may have been the one playing him on side, which is a bit irritating. But we'll keep attacking for now. Hope we can get another goal, make it 2 1. We obviously want to try and be ahead going into the away leg. Oh, Robert's tackled. Once again, I said, oh, very good at dribbling, and <laughs> then he's tackled. But look at him go here. Lovely play. 
it's going to shoot and it's going to go wide. He does that. He's he stopped doing that as much as he used to. He does like to have a shot. His long shots have gone up to 12, but they're not quite up to the standard where he should be shooting regularly from there. And the alley to Douglas Santos. Into Tello, nice play, come on. Christian Tello, Origi, through to Roberts, who scores? Oh, 25th goal of the season for him. Wonderful play. I will go counter now. Simply because it does work sometimes not always um, but it gets big teams home for me it usually works but we're gonna make some subs uh, Lu Luciano Acosta has been central midfield for me deep line playmaker I think I said a couple episodes ago and he's been very good there but Poirier is gonna come on and hopefully make it a bit more solid in the middle Gil Romero maybe to come off or oh, Yuri on a yellow bit of a risk I'm actually Gonna bring Ivan on because Garzan's got tired legs, and Ivan should bring should freshen it up at right back, and hopefully not cock up and make a mistake. But I'll make two subs now, and make one right at the end if need be. I usually try and make my three subs. I, someone did ask me, do I make my subs for the sake of it? And I do. I think everyone does on FM. Come on, Origi Roberts. Oh, he's hit the post. Unlucky. Ah, so close. So, so close. I'm going to make my last sub now. Gaston Romero is on a yellow. Going to bring on Canales. He's, he's done well when he's played. But Gil Romero, the captain coming off. I don't really have an out and out captain. Like He's my main. He only came into the team this season. And he straight away is my captain. Um, obviously, I sold all the, all the original English players. Yeah, great advert for English football I am. Oh no, oh well done. Yuri takes it away, Origi. Now run it clear. That's it. That's what I like to see from Origi. He's such a superb player. Into Roberts. Can we get a last minute goal? Back to Poye. Yuri. Roberts. Whip it in, Ivan. Whip it in. Does. Uh, knocked away. Yuri. Just. Oh no. Head it. Win it, someone. Gabriel Barbosa on the attack. That's the end. We've won 2 1. A good win. But obviously, they've got the away goal, so it could be. A bit tricky away from home. And now my game is frozen. No! Yay, it's alive. Well done, lads. Man of the match performance from Roberts with the goal. He did play well. It was a superb performance. Let's say it passionately. There we go. Ah, oh, and we had well, 18 shots. Three times as many shots as them. Possession much stronger as well. They only had two shots on target. And of course they missed the penalty early on. Excellent stuff. Barcelona won, Man United won in the other game. Quite some big clashes here. So I'm going to play my two league games now and then come back to you for the second leg. Welcome back then. It's the second leg against Bayern Munich away from home. And in the last couple of games... We won one and lost one. So we beat Crystal Palace 5-2. Four goals from Henry Burrell, the youngster. Absolutely insane performance from him. I also tried out two other young Colombians in my reserves. Uh, that's my phone beeping. Boom, boom. Um, yeah, he's actually... This guy, Alvaro Aguaran, has actually got seven caps and one goal for Colombia already. He's only 19. I'm not really sure why, because I think Colombia... You'd have thought they'd have, they'd have better players than him. He could potentially be a good player, we'll see. But he scored as well against them. Um, they're 50th in the world, and I've got <laughs> four Colombians in my team, actually. Uh, they've got a good team, so I'm not sure why they're so low now. Because they keep producing young players. And the other one was... Where is he? So I had two Colombians at centre, but I've actually could play three Colombians at the back. Edgar Cabeza is another one who could be a quality player, apparently. So... Hopefully him and Garzon will be good centre-backs in the future. I played him at right-back though, because I just Evans annoying. So for this game, I've gone with Douglas Son Santos at left-back, um, simply because Marcelo annoyed me in the last game. Oh yeah, I forgot to show you the actual defeat. 1-0 against Arsenal. Poor. Yeah, he annoyed me. It was his fault for the goal. He had a 6.1 performance. So I'm playing Douglas Santos in this game, who's actually wanted by Dortmund at the moment. A um, few players are wanted by certain clubs. Even is wanted 
think he's wanted by Real Madrid, yeah. So I'd happily sell him to them, considering he always seems to make mistakes for me. Uh, we are still top of the league. Only six points clear of Chelsea, though. So it could be could be tough, but we should comfortably win it. We've only lost four games all season, and they're against strong teams. Let's go for this. In the break between these two matches, I was offered the Man United job. Well, an interview with them, anyway. They uh, sacked their manager, despite... You know, get into the Champions League, drawing against Barcelona in their first game of their first knockout round match, and um, offered me an interview. But they've gone for Laurent Blanc, so he's left PSG now. So we're away from home against Bayern Munich on the, the back of a defeat against Arsenal. And I think I may play deep again. In fact, I may go counter. Get rid of that. Yeah, counter, I think. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Do we drop deeper? This could be asking for trouble, this. But it's away against Bayern Munich. And it usually means I don't concede so many goals if I start with counter. And of course, they have an away goal. So it'd be nice to get an away goal early on ourselves, just to ease the pressure a bit. There goes Yuri, nice play, Acosta into Roberts, Origi, Tello scores, we've got an early away goal and it's wonderful, I think Origi left it for Tello or flicked it onto him there, let's see the 3D replay, Yuri into Acosta, into Roberts, Origi just actually fell over <laughs> instead and Tello smashed it home, <laughs> what was Origi doing? <laughs> anyway, Tello mate, puts us 1-0 up early on, can Costa. Oh, Yuri! Is that in from Van Aken? It is. On the line, pretty much. He gets his fourth goal of the season. Now, of course, Balanta's back, I forgot to say. He's back for this game, which is a big help. Acosta's our set-piece specialist now, along with Yuri. And Yuri smashed it, and Van Aken probably was going in anyway, but he's decided to get his head to it, because it did actually beat Neuer in goal. Good old Yuri. Anyway, he gets an assist for that, I guess. Ooh, 2-0 up, two away goals, that is fantastic. And we're playing counter, so there's no need to actually go defensive now because we already are, sort of. This is nice play, and halfway, Origi. Oh, lovely ball, can Roberts not quite? Oh, no, now they're countering. Hack him down. Ah, oh, Balotelli misses. He's had a complete mare against me in both games, hasn't he? Gertz are on the ball, Thiago. Balotelli, ah, oh, fires it over as well, he's... Failing, he's going to probably score a hat-trick in the second half, isn't he? Douglas sent us throwing in. Oh, knocked away. Get to it. Oh, Lewandowski wins it. Come on, Van Aken. Get him down. Oh, he's gone all the way. What a ball. Thiago, get rid of it. Oh, great from Van Aken. Good clearance. This is tense. This is highlight field, isn't it, this first half? Here goes Lewandowski. We're struggling to keep hold of them. And he's hit the post, I think, or Liali caught it at the near post. He's finding too much space. Let's uh, make changes. I thought I said to mark him. Maybe I didn't. Acosta, edge of the box. Tiedemann, oh, Yuri almost smashed it home. That would have been good. Sorry if I suddenly exclaimed a noise rather too loudly there. Uh, okay, good. Good first half. Excellent first half, in fact. ariki has been a bit redundant up front. Romero... Our worst performer, along with Belanta, actually, both on 6.7. Belanta. This is the first time you get to see him in action, don't you, guys? With me, anyway. Here goes Tello, uh, tackled. Larm, still playing, still a hero at right back for them, or wherever they want to play him. Streetman's injured, that's a bonus. Fantastic midfielder, of course. Tempted to bring Burrell on for, for Origi. Or maybe put, move Origi to the left, bring Tello off, as he's my most tired player. Although he has got a goal, of course, playing very well. Come on, Acosta. Probably should bring Acosta off. He's not particularly defensive. Or bring Romero off and, and or swap them round, maybe. I don't know. Who knows? Ah, oh, Lewandowski scores. Again against me. It's 27th goal of the season for him. Still a sensational striker on this game. Time to make some subs. So, Tello's having a good game, but I'm going to move Origi. Hmm. 
actually. Carrasco is going to come on for Tello because he's a bit tired. And Burrell is going to come on for Arigi. Add some more pace up front. I need to say. Oh, I wanted to do the one where you say continue from where you left off. But I don't have that option. He's got four goals against Palace. So we are winning 4 2 on aggregate. And we've got a two goal. We've got two away goals. So surely we should be fine now. Unless we spontaneously come up. They've actually had more shots than me, which is unusual with this tactic. But we are playing counter today, of course. Win it, Romero. Get back. Oh, yeah, I was going to bring Acosta off, wasn't I? Or, yeah, we're bringing Acosta off. Poya is going to come on in the middle. Be more solid. And Yuri will probably take corners for me from now on. Come on, guys. Please hang on. We can do this. Ten minutes. Even if they get another goal, we should be fine. In fact, they need three goals, don't they? I think we're going to win here. We won 2 1 again. 2 2 1 wins against Bayern Munich. Fantastic stuff. Van Aken, man of the match. Probably because of his goal. Blanta was actually my joint worst performer, 6.7. But that's okay. He's still getting used to this team, isn't he? Gars on at right back, another Colombian. I thought maybe having those two together would help him to start with. He is my key player, technically. Anyway, we uh, we won despite having less possession, less shots. And that is the end of this episode, pretty much. We're into the quarter-finals of the Champions League, so I will bring you that in the next episode, then the semi-finals, hopefully, and then the final. But, oh, Man United winning 5-0 against Barcelona. That is insane. So, I don't know when the quarter-finals are. Massive ambulance goes flying past. Um, somewhere down here, I guess. Oh, it's here, in fact. In fact, yes, it is here. So that will be episode 36. Then we've got the semi-final, and then we've got the final. So three more episodes, if, of course, we get through. If we don't, then there'll just be two more episodes when I do the last game of the season. But hopefully, the Premier League is already sewn up. But thanks for watching. Please leave a like. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you in the next episode.